Heir to the Sun, the second book that I'll be reading for Spiffbo. Let's talk about it. Hello, welcome to the Ponderings of Pete. I am Pete, and I finished a, my second book for Spiffbo that I will be reviewing. So let's just talk about it. But before we do that, if you are new here, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, there's a like button, a comment box, subscribe button, all that jazz. Would mean a lot if you wanted to subscribe and then hit that bell notification. And then if you are coming back for, you know, another time, another round. Thank you. I appreciate it. Your continued support does really help. I really just thank you. If you have read this book, if you want to read this book, like your thoughts down below, please. What did you think? Um, and then if you want to read this book, you know, let me doubt, know that in the comments as well. That'd be great. Um, so let's talk about this. Heir to the Sun by Karen Laikibo. This is the first in the series, The Chronicles of Ashia. But in my opinion, this book works very well as a standalone book. Uh, it does definitely feels like it wraps up pretty well at the very end of it. So if you really just wanted to try this out to see if you wanted to continue with the series, if you vibe with the characters, the world, the writing, you're not gonna be left on a cliffhanger and you're not gonna have that thread left hanging in your mind for entirety of time. So what is this book about, right? That's the first question in everybody's mind. So it is about a girl who is fleeing an abusive relationship. And coincidentally, as many portal fantasies happen to, you know, insert, she is also the essentially the chosen one, the lost heir to the throne of a magical kingdom. So she runs away from her abusive boyfriend. She stumbles upon um, a very small town and befriends an interesting lady who tells her about this kingdom of Ashia. And she has to decide whether or not to go with her. So from there, there are obstacles she has to overcome. There are things she has to learn about the kingdom and yeah it's it's a very enjoyable book um, I wasn't the biggest fan of the ending to be honest um, there's one particular part of the en ending that I was like I saw it coming because she set it up and I was like please don't do this and she did it and I was like okay okay and it is kind of related to one of the things that I enjoyed about the book early on in it. so is this a purely typical portal fantasy heir to the world you can you're destined to save the world in some ways it is in some ways it isn't there is one element that is very very common in a lot of chosen one stories that isn't here in this one and it's 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 she she makes her own kind of the way she takes the plot makes a lot more sense and there's there's similarities but like it's not the same as the very typical chosen one story in this case like my brain automatically goes to Aragon because that's like the first one that I encounter as a kid she doesn't try to retread all the paths that have been tread so many times before um, and I think one of the big elements that she does this with is with the abusive ex-boyfriend going into this especially like going like her leaving her ex-boyfriend that is done very very well we meet Aura um, our protagonist as she's leaving her ex-boyfriend and you see the effects that he had on her and then when she's gone you feel the tension that she feels with regards to oh my gosh Dave's Dave is gonna walk around the corner any second like that is written really really well and that that terror of just like I can't get close to anybody because they're gonna hurt me like Dave hurt me going into this book I was worried a little bit about that but reading that, like, it was... Mm. So, it might be, to a certain extent, a little triggering if you've been in a really abusive relationship before, a really controlling relationship, um, but it also might be a easy source of sympathy for you. That, that part of it was written really well. Aura also had some pretty realistic reactions to being like, oh, I'm in a crazy new magical world now. A lot of times you can be overwhelmed with childlike innocence and oh my gosh it's so crazy and let's just go with the flow and all this other jazz aura doesn't react like that and it, it was it was heartening to see someone who would probably react to a certain extent similarly to me 
if I was in a magical world. There is a certain element of I would be wide-eyed with wonder at some of the things in the world, but there are other reactions I would have if I was thrown into certain situations that a lot of fantasy characters are in portal fantasies. So she doesn't, Aura doesn't have these typical cookie cutter reactions, which is great to see. There's multiple bad guys in the story. Each of them have a different dynamic. Um, it, it is to a certain extent, pretty black and white. Um, and the magic system is definitely a soft magic system. Um, and it's used pretty well. There are some moments where our protagonist is kind of like, well, that rule doesn't apply to me because I'm the, the chosen one now. So that was frustrating to a certain extent in several instances. But other than that, it was pretty good. Like there, there were some good moments of problem solving using the magic based on what we learned that were creative and fun and cool. The tension that was built up in the first three, like three quarters of the book was really great. I do think that the last quarter of the book wasn't the best because <clears throat> there was one or two things that changed in that last quarter that I wasn't a fan of personally. The solution to end all solutions for this particular book was presented as the only solution, but I as the reader was not convinced it was the only solution. Like there wasn't a, hey, we could do this. Hey, we could do that. Hey, we could do this. But no, those aren't possible. It was just a, well, we talked about it and I guess this is the only solution that I can think of. So it wasn't convincing to me that that was the only solution. All in all, I really did enjoy this book. Um, despite my misgivings with the endings. J definitely a great start to a series that functions as a standalone that you can check out. There'll be a link down below if you want to buy the book. And of course, just stay tuned for the other four books that I will be reading for Team Bookborn. And then at the end, I'll probably announce which one is the semi-finalist that I'm going to be pushing forward. Um, let me know if, you know, you like this review. Thank you so much. Have a great rest of your day and get some rest because rest is super important. Bye.